Amen. Because the word is forever settled. As it is, so it was, and so shall it be. Who is King Saul? Anybody have an idea? The ladies always want to take the yes for my helpers. First king of Israel, yes, that is one of the aspects. Who is King Saul? He was the first king of Israel. Um, for me, he was, he wasn't a king that was a, like that was given by God, but the one, the Israelites asked God. Okay, so he was the king of Israel, and secondly, God did not appoint him, but the the children of Israel appointed him. Yes, who else has a different opinion? Because uh, we need to know the word of God as it is written. So that we will not just go wayward. Alright, shall we turn our Bible into 1 Samuel? When you get home, you can read a whole lot about it. 1 Samuel chapter 13. We will start from verse number 1. If anybody is there, I want somebody to quickly take us to 1 Samuel 13. 1 Samuel chapter 13. Yeah, we we'll take them gradually. So rain one year, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, so chose him, him three thousand men of Israel, whereof two thousand were with Saul in Mitch Mash and in Mount Bethel, and a thousand were with Jonathan and Gibeah of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Geba, and the Philistines heard of it. And Saul so blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard and said that Saul so has smitten a garrison of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And that Israel, and that Israel also was also. Also was had in abomination. Okay, jump to the eighth verse. Okay. And he tarried he tarried seven days. Okay. Who tarried seven days? Continue for me. He tarried seven days mm -hmm. according to the set time. According to set time. That Samuel had appointed. Uh-huh. But Samuel came not to Gilgal. And but Samuel did not come to Gilgal. And the people were scattered from him. And the people that were gathering now and this, they all scattered. And Saul said, And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering. To Please me. listen closely here. Bring closer or bring to me the burnt offering. And peace offering. And peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. And Saul offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. That as soon as. That immediately he, he finished. Had made an end of sacrificing the peace offering and the burnt offering. Continue. Behold, Samuel came. Behold, the prophet appeared. And Saul went out to meet him. And now Saul began to meet him. The prophet himself. That he might salute him. Now he has finished the job of the prophet. And now he is welcoming the prophet to perform his work. Amen. Amen. Finish up to the 14th verse. Because that's where I will take the things from. And Saul said. And Saul said. What hast thou done? And Saul, no, and Saul said, said. What hast thou done? What have you done? Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me. And now Saul said, I saw everybody leaving me. And that thou camest not within the days. And you delayed by coming to perform what God has instructed you to do. And that the Philistines gathered themselves together. And our us. enemies have gathered, ready to battle with us. Therefore, therefore, said, said I, the Philippians will come down now. Upon because I was so affrighted or afraid and I was not able to control myself. And what I have I not made supplication. And I don't have time or patience to wait for you to come. And I forced myself therefore and offered a benefit. So therefore I took your position as a prophet 
Although I am the king, but I took your stead and I did your work. And Saul said to Saul. And, and Saul, Saul said to Saul. Uh huh. Thou hast done foolishly. This is the key. Please open your ears. Samuel said unto Saul, You have done foolishly. I pray that tonight nobody will be foolish in the name of Jesus. Amen. I am speaking figuratively. Finish up for me. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God. Why did you not simply obey what the list of the commandments I spoke unto you? Which he commanded thee. Uh -huh. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom. It was an iota of time, a little chance that God wanted to establish you and establish your family forever. That the throne will not depart from your family. But because you could not wait it. Mm -hmm. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. Now your kingdom was supposed to have been perpetually permitted by Elohim not permit. The Lord has sought him out a man of And him. now because of this disobedience, God immediately has found somebody. May you be found in the name of Jesus. Amen. Put your hands together for the reading of the word. In order to continue the journey of life, that you wherever you are will do it to you. Amen. You must honor the men of God say Anna. 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 There are so many laws which govern the earth. Last time I said the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it talks about one person and one person only. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Any page you open speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ. The God we did not know. The God we want to know. The God who wants to have relationship with his creation is one and only the Lord Jesus Christ. And then to grow and advance in the knowledge of God, you must look at the people that God used to perform great miracles. And then you look at the way God dealt with them. If you are able to comply and obey and be led according to the spirit of God, then God will not quit you, but will rather establish you. This man in focus is one of the people you cannot ignore, especially if you want to know the ways of God. If you want to know how God is able to do with his people and bring victory to the house of God, you can't ignore this man. And this man was called Saul. Now, this man came from a family which was the least of the children of Jacob. Because from Genesis 14 and Genesis 44, before Jacob was about to die, the Bible said he gathered all his children together. So the 12 sons were gathered. And then he started from Reuben. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, the excellency of might and the excellency of strength. And then because you went up to defile my bed, the posterity of double portion who is supposed to have, you will not have. Why? Because you defiled my bed. It came unto the last one called Benjamin. So this king came from the little, the last born of all the sons of Jacob called Benjamin. And then because he is the least, the least do not inherit blessing. According to the order of time, when I have two or more children, my first son will have fair share. And then because he is the first son, he also gets the right to rule. So the right of rulership will give him a double portion. But because this last born was not having the double portion, God wanted to show that he is sovereign. And he does things according to his own will. And then when he proposes, no one disposes. And for that matter, I will set myself a king. Because the children of Israel go to a point that their enemies were always multiplying and the enemies were fighting with strategies the battle with the enemies were not fought with just flesh and blood but they were amounting so many things any deities any gods with their skills and their strategies and for that matter israel also needed somebody who will lead them somebody who will fight 
somebody who will take the lead so that when we talk of victory in history, we can point to somebody. Hallelujah. When you look at the land of this place, like the US of A, when you go to the archives, you will see that some people, some brave men, fought for the land. And then they obtained liberty for the whole land. So Israel also wanted somebody like that. People who come together, lead the territory, lead the battle, and when victory comes, they will say that it is by virtue of this. Now, because they propose to get a king, Bible says that God disliked the idea. Because God is the king forever. And the kingship of God, nobody enthroned him. God is king before he created the earth. God is king before he called Abraham. God is king before he gave Jacob. God will forever be king. Hallelujah. Amen. And the children of Israel forsook the ability of God in the midst of them. So they cry out. When people cry, God gave them their choice. If you are a believer and you are looking for something better, I will crave your indulgence to leave it to God to prepare you a table. Hallelujah. Because when you try to set a table for yourself, that table in your own eyes might be good. But it will be good for a season. Why? Because you initiated it. May you not initiate your projects in the name of Jesus. If you want to start business, if you want to start a new career, if you want to do anything which will be valuable in life, you must pray to God that God lead me. Now the people, God was not leading them. So they said, God give us a king. We need a king we can see. We need a king who will speak to us. We need a king we can go and complain to. We need somebody like ourselves, flesh and blood, that we can see face to face so that we will know the strategies for the battle. Hallelujah. Because we don't see you. And then God gave them somebody called Saul. This man was very good in the beginning. But as life happens to all of us, some people change in a matter of time. Somebody can be good one year, but in the next five years, you wouldn't know what will happen. Then corruption will set in, and that person will turn out to be a bad man. May that not be your story in the name of Jesus. Because you can start something good, but finishing it becomes a problem. You will finish in style in the name of Jesus. There is a race which we are all running. It doesn't matter how you start it. It doesn't matter how you run it. But make sure that you don't stop along the way. You must finish your race in the name of Jesus. So this king, Bible said that God has established him. Although he come from the little of the family, but from the little, God has made him to be the king. And then God led him to win more than three battles. When he obeys, when he listens to the instructions of God, he was winning the battle. And then there was a time, Bible said, the Lord told Samuel that because the people have forsaken me, and because they wanted a king, they have not only despised you as a prophet, but me as the king that despised me. Nevertheless, as long as I am the father of this generation, I will still keep them. As long as the king is connected to me, I will still keep them. You know what? This man, in spite of the previous victories that he had gotten, Bible said that there was a time that they must prepare a sacrifice. Sacrifice is something you do so that the relationship between you and God becomes so plain. Sacrifice is your, your worship, your ability to respond, your, your anger that reflects outside. The attitude inside of you that you want to tell God that God, I honor you, I respect you, that is your sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says that, do not be conformed to this, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because this is your reasonable sacrifice. Sacrifice which is lively. Sacrifice which is not dead. Sacrifice which is alive. And so this guy, the job of a prophet, 
people might not understand why God chooses or that sustains. The other day, I was telling you that somebody just touched the Ark of the Covenant. Although it slipped from the cart, he wanted to fall down, to break. But the person saw that no, he has to help God, and he touched it. The only person who has the ability to touch God, or to touch any part of God, or to touch anything relative to God, is supposed to be a priest. Why do you think it's supposed to be a priest? Because everything we do, we do them in pattern. Say pattern. pattern. Say pattern. pattern. When we say pattern, God does not do things amiss. God doesn't do things anyhow. God does things according to plan. So the pattern is that whenever there is a priest, the priest himself is a symbol of the presence of God, which is Jesus. Amen. So if Jesus is the priest, it is his responsibility to pacify for you. It's his responsibility to forgive your sin. It's his responsibility to make your ways closer to God. Even if you have been forsaken, even if you have been rejected, whenever there is priest, the priest will make oblations so that the proximity is not scattered. Hallelujah. Tonight, anybody who is far from God, May you be drawn closer in the name of Jesus. So this guy, one of the attitude that he messed up, the biggest of it. Number one, he was impatient. 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 And I know most of us have got... Impatient. Impatient. Say impatient. Impatient. It's an attitude or your inability to wait, inability to tarry, inability to respond to time, wanting to do things in your own way, wanting to go by your own things. Somebody who is very sick, severely rushed to the hospital. The doctor is not in, but he is not willing to wait for the doctor. Meanwhile, he is looking for healing. That is impatient. Follow me closely. So you who is sick, you who need help, no matter how long it takes, you must have the time to want to wait. Hallelujah. Most people come to church with this kind of attitude. When they come to church, they have their programs rolled out already. Oh, by this time, some ministration will be there. Yeah, I like singing. So I want to walk, walk, only go and enjoy worship and praise. When I'm done, I leave. That is impatient. Somebody so because this lady will be leading the worship this Sunday. Me, I don't like this lady, so I will wait. When the lady finishes the song, then I step in. That is impatient. Hallelujah. So this guy was having that same attitude. Bible said that there was a set time. A set time. Because God doesn't do things anyhow. He does things according to plan. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says that to everything under the sun there is what? A season. And there is a time appointed. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to marry. A time to give birth. A time to do everything. But there was a time that God wanted to establish his people through human instrumentality. The only thing God is looking for in our relationship, or in this Christian dom, is relationship. The relationship. relationship. God is looking for this. He is not looking for religion. The enemy of relationship is religion. Religion will tell you worship on Saturday. Religion will tell you pray five times. Religion will tell you wear white clothes when you are coming to church. Religion will tell you do some kind of hairstyle. Religion will tell you wear some kind of attire. Else you cannot please God. That is religion. Hallelujah. Now God is looking for relationship. So when God wanted to establish this man, this human called Saul as a king at that time, the function of a king I told you before, Every king represents God. 
in the midst of the people. When you are a king, you are reflecting the nature of God with your people. The function and the importance of every king is that kings reflect how God is like. Because nobody rules but God. This man, because of impatience, God wanted to establish his family not for one year, not for ten years, but perpetually. But Bible said that because of that character in patience, the Lord could not establish him. If we fail short in any of this attitude of impatience, may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Because impatience will make you even lose your own miracle. You will be in a service. The Lord is moving. Your set time could be that season. God is not residing in time. Please follow me closely. God is not residing in time. When I mean until and no, God does not stay in time. But God has never been late in time. Hallelujah. God doesn't live in time. The time you think it is being wasted, the time you think it is far spent, in the presence of God, it is nothing. Bible said immediately that King Saul performed the duty of the prophet, then the prophet showed up. Why did he do it? One of the reasons is that the people were leaving him. Papa, Sometimes you will have 100 members and then it will look as if 50 are departing. They are not, they are not departing. To you, you might say that they are departing or maybe they are visiting other churches or maybe they are going elsewhere. They don't have time for you. They don't go. They don't do this. Don't let your mind tell you that they are leaving you. So because of this fearlessness, fearfulness, he was so afraid that why is it that these people do not like me? An attitude of being left alone, neglected, forsaken. It will happen as long as you are a human being. Sometimes people will leave or draw away from you. When they draw away from you, it is not negative. Because they're drawing back. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will do the drawing myself. If you are a believer and the contract is drawing away from you, it means you yourself is going away from mercy. And when you connect yourself back to mercy, that is where the things start to draw closer. Nothing is too late in life. Young men, young women who are growing now, don't rush in things. Don't rush in doing anything. Oh, my time is up. By 30 years, I should have been married and have five children. By 22 years, nobody is seeking my hand in marriage. Then we begin to be impatient, especially when you go to foreign lands. By 18 years, they must marry. 20 years, they, they are settled because they are done with their schooling. And so, everybody is rushing. But with God, nothing delays. This man saw that people are leaving him. It is part of life. You wouldn't get everybody to be with you forever. No, 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 no. You can't get people to serve you forever. You can't get people to sing your praise in the good books of men forever. You, even if you do, you feed them. You clothe them. You do everything for them. You can't expect for them to stay with you forever. But there is one thing you can do to keep them. If you make your path closer with your God, if you make amends with the Father of life, if you connect yourself to the church that prays, if your business was time the next season, it means that your connection to the altar here has no defect at all. Hallelujah. Yeah. Most people, when the Lord begins to bless them, because it is the prayer of fathers. Fathers do three things. Fathers provide. Fathers protect. And fathers promote. So it is your father. Papa Prince will pray for you. God establish the, hand of, the work of, the, of their hands. Father, increase their capacity. When you begin to see new moves, you think that it is by your own will. Or maybe it is by new connection you've got to. No, 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 no. It is an altar which is speaking for you. May this altar speak for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any progress we make in life, Paul, Saul, sorry, did 
did not merit the kingship in the first place, as our dear mama said. He did not merit it. But because God has given it to him, it means if God was able to give to you, that same God will cause the people to follow you. May you be followed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Never see yourself as lagging behind. There are sometimes some people in life, you will see them leading. It doesn't mean they have gotten there. Life, nobody gets to the destination. Nobody gets to the destination. So when you see people maybe getting promotions, going higher, getting more money, getting prospects, it doesn't mean they're putting there. They have their own problems they are, they are, they are also thinking about. But maybe your case is even better than them. May your case be better in the name of Jesus. So the attitude of this man, our time is just running away like that. The attitude is that number one, he was impatient. And then he also exhibited an attitude of fear. If you are a believer, when God speaks, there are two animals that he normally uses them. One of them is a lion and then an eagle. If you study the lives and the characteristics of these beings, although they are animals, they are not human beings, but these, especially this one, fearless. When he sees an elephant, an elephant might be huge. One stomp of an elephant might kill him. But when he sees the elephant, the mindset is that lunch is ready. When you see problems along the way as a believer, challenges when they come to you, don't concede defeat. You must use that problem to be a stepping stone. No matter how high, how big, how tall it is. Because when you become fearless, the whole world opens to you like that. May you be fearless in the name of Jesus. This king had fear. Bible says that there is no fear in love. Because fear has got torment. Whenever you let this guy lead you, it will torment you. Hey, people are running away. I am not accepted. Everybody doesn't even pick my course. Why? The pastor doesn't even visit me. Nobody calls me from the church. Why? Because this one will torment you. Every believer should do away with fear. Hallelujah. Amen. There are seven different kinds of fear. Time will not permit. We have normal fear. Everybody has one. But there is a fear which controls people. There is a fear which will reside on you. There is a fear which will make you do nothing. Even if you want to start business, the fear will tell you you will fail. And because you believe in that, it will also control you for you to get failure. But failure will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. So because he was afraid, he did something which he shouldn't have done. May you not do that in the name of Jesus. Because when we become so afraid sometimes, fear syndrome control you to do some things your subconscious mind has not even thought about. Please, impatience should be out of our equation. Fear should also be out of the equation. And then before I bring you down for you to ask your questions, another attitude that this guy had, that he did the duty which he shouldn't have done. When you do something which is not your job, when you do something which is not your own, we call it disobedience. Say disobedience. And disobedience is the root. It's the root of all of his dismissal. Disobedience. Last Sunday, Pastor Prince was talking about sin as unbelief. When you obey all the time, it is belief. John 3, 16 and 17. 17 says, For Christ did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus, his own agenda for the world is that everybody will be saved. John chapter 17, when he was praying, he got to the first, he said, Father, I pray not for the world, but I pray for the ones you have given unto me. But when you get closer to the 10, 11, he said, but as many that receive me, 
Because when you receive him, you will not be a castaway. God always wants people to be closer. He's looking for relationship. He's looking to bring people back. He's looking to bring any people who are, who are not in the good books of men, like Rahab in Jericho. Rahab has built her, her, her house on the wall, which means the wall was so thick and, and, and large. Because you can't build a house on a wall. But the walls of Jericho, this tells you how enormous it was. How impenetrable. That's why the children of Israel were not able to enter. Because you can build houses on their walls. But Jericho was saved. Why? Because God was looking for a vessel which he can use. May you become a vessel of use in the name of Jesus. Because whoever obeyed when we have obedience, if you obey and willing, Isaiah 51, if the people are obedient and willing, they shall eat the good of the land. If you are obedient and willing, you shall eat the good of the land. Riches is in the land. Wealth is in the land. Health is in the land. Everything which makes life so livable is in the land. But it takes obedience to fulfill it. Tonight, may your obedience fulfill you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is just an introduction. Our time is already catch. So we learned that Saul was impatient. He was afraid. And the fear controlled him. We will get into detail some other time. Fear controlled him. Why did fear control him? How did the fear ended him? And then could he have redeemed his position? When God dismissed him, would he have recovered? David was condemned several times by God. But God rescued this guy over and over and over. If you're a believer, you might fall. Because the righteous will fall seven times. But in all your fall, there is a lifting up. Hallelujah. Why is it that this guy fell, but there was no lifting up? When time permits, we shall learn all of this. Because you can't do away with the character of Saul. If you want to stand as a true potential, as a true believer, as a solid Bible-believing Christian, you can't do away with him. When you know how he led his life and God dismissed him, you will also be cautious of how you are tracking. Somebody will just walk over pastor and you become barren. Somebody will, will look down, just in the mind, not saying it. Because it happened in Luke chapter 12. Bible said, a man lived, and then he thought that, oh my soul, rejoice. Eat your good. You have many days. Celebrate yourself. He didn't speak anything. But God said, thou fool, tonight I will take your soul. Did he open his mouth? No. Everything was in the thought. So God searches the thought. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I know the thought I think towards you. A thought of peace and not of evil. To give you the good of the land and to establish you. You will be established in the name of Jesus. Yeah. This man, his characters are so plenty. But tonight we have learned only three. But these three are even in introduction. So I will just open up for five minutes. If you have any comment, any question relative to what we just introduced. We've not started yet. This is just an introduction. If you have anything that baffles your mind, as I was speaking, maybe something you got along the path that you did not understand. Or maybe you have a thought that you think is worrying you in impatience, in being fearful, and then making you to disobey. Because when you stand here, there is no point of redemption. But if there is something you can do so that your disobedience is transferred, Transfer to be obedience because everything we are teaching you so that your obedience will be subject to the obedience of Christ. That's the purpose of teaching that your obedience will be submitted unto the obedience of Jesus Christ. Then His Lordship will cover everything. So I open the floor for you. Anything you don't understand with the character focus, which was on King Saul, and then you have something to voice out. Pastors are here, I am here, we'll help you out. Any question? Any question? 
When you don't ask questions, I don't like it to me. I like questions. I don't seek for answers. I seek for questions. Because questions will introduce an answer to me. So whenever we are talking like this, always seek for questions. Don't look for answers. Because when you ask questions, answer will follow. Any question? Any question? When you look at the book, it will blow your mind. You won't find anything. Just what I said, any question. That is fine. Any question. Okay, can I make a comment? Yes, please, you can. Because of the disobedience of Saul, the first king of Israel, who was supposed to inherit and then up to all his generation, mm -hmm. nothing is not about King Saul in Israel as of today. You go to Mount Gilboa, it's not even a memorial. Mm -hmm. No statues, nothing. It will only show you that man before. Nothing good Just about like it. That. When you go to the Jerusalem, the city of David, mm -hmm. everybody for history, for tourism, for all purposes, people would like to know about David. People would like to, to, to copy something from David. Yes. God bless you so much. Amen. Amen. Yeah, because of obedience of David, David has created a memorial. And that memorial was implemented by God Himself. That is why everything is about David. But when you talk about Saul, nothing is left. But when David was on the scene, he even remembered to do good unto the house of Saul. Not because of Saul, but because of Jonathan, who became a yoke fellow, a brother in arms. A brother in arms. Who else also has a question? Who has a question? You see, we need more time for these things. Yes, Pastor. Uh, uh, I would want you to touch on the relationship okay. a little bit okay. to dive deep because uh, uh, when, when you were hitting on it, uh, it was hitting me. Yes. Can somebody please find this one? I, will, I will really want you to delve deep on, on it, the relationship. Now I've received an Instagram from the question he asked. Yeah, I've received this Instagram from heaven. Okay, when you look at Genesis chapter 1, there are two kinds of creation. When God created man, two kinds. When you read it as you are reading the storybook. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, 27, God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our own likeness. 27, let them have dominion. Okay, but when you come to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, 5, 6, 7, that is another creation altogether. Because in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God created the spirit man. That's why we say man is not body, man is a spirit. He first created the spirit being. Because with the spirit being, it will not die again. God didn't create man to die. God created man to live forever and ever. And that is what man will do. You will live forever and ever. So when he created the spirit man, he created man in his image, and the image of God is spirit. John 4, 24. God is spirit, so they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So having created the spirit man, then he had made a garden, and the garden is on the earth. And for the spirit man to live, to have relationship with God, God has to create an earth suit. And the earth suit is what you call body. Say body. body. So God has created this one, but he has to give him a uniform to wear. So the uniform to wear and stay and live here and enjoy God is the body. So God took the spirit which he has created and put inside the body, which is from the earth. And Bible said, man became a living soul. So the soul is the one standing in between the spirit and the body. And the soul is what God and Satan are fighting about. So the one you respond to, you keep the relationship of that. If the spirit one responds perfectly to the body by controlling this one, then they will have a good relationship with God. But if Satan is able to use the soul, the mind, the will, the emotion, 
The soul has three compartments. The mind, the will, the emotion. Nobody controls your will. Nobody told you to come to church. You came voluntarily. So that is your own will. You can choose to stay home. God does not control our will. But when we submit our will, when we submit our will to God, that is where we don't want to come, but we will come. Why? Because our will is not our own. We become like a bond servant. So relationship, God is looking for relationship. He is not looking for people that will do this, do this, you are right, do this, you are wrong. Uh, in this week, do righteous things 99 and sin one. No, 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 no. You can sin 99 and do one right. God will still cover your sin. Why? Because he killed the lamb even before he created you. He shed the blood of Jesus even before he laid the foundation. He knew you will sin. He knew you will fall. He knew you will mad yourself. You will get yourself dirty. But as long as you run towards him, Papa, I messed up but I've come home. The father will cast you not away. So the relationship is that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible said the serpent was, so, was more subtle and that he entered the creation. He came to entice the man and they did disobey. So when they disobeyed their father, they thought they would be put away. That is why when God showed up in the cool of the day, they were in hiding. The tree which they have to domain, now the tree was controlling them how to do. So they were hiding below creation. The man who was standing taller than creation, now he is what? In hiding because of relationship. But Jesus, Bible said, he killed an animal and then he made a seal for them. He did not cast them away. He did not just send them out, but he covered their sins. Why? Because he knew they would fall. So God is ever loving. Ever loving. He loves his children. As long as you take Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he does not cast you away. When we get to heaven, although you will miss most of the crowns, we have 12 crowns. We have crown of righteousness, crown, so many crowns. But you will not have any crown to glow and to shine. That's why we say some people will live in Zongo. <laughs> some people will be, will be in heaven, but they will not enjoy. You will be there, but you will not be celebrated. Because you did nothing to, 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 to just praise Jesus. You did not show Jesus in your body. You didn't reflect his character in you. You will be there while Pastor Prince will be taking crowns. He said, ah, this one, I knew him from X. But why am I not even getting one kobo? <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So the relationship, that's how it is. So, so uh, when they say, how possible can a man think differently that made his thoughts let God take his life? If okay. you have a deeper relationship. Yes. There are two voices in the earth. In Matthew chapter 16, when Peter had told Jesus, thou art the Christ, God's anointed. When you get to 2021, same time, you see, you, you, because of your body, eh, any spirit can enter you. But if you are a believer, you cannot be possessed. You can be demonized. So the thought is that different thoughts. The battle that we have as believers is the battle of the mind. Why? Because Satan is after your soul, and your soul is your mind, your ability to think, your intellect, your will, your motion, emotion, how you feel. People feel their spirit with resentment. That is not a good thought. People feel jealous. That is not a good thought. When you saw your girlfriend laughing on phone, ah, she has got another boyfriend. You see, that mentality alone. We call it presumptuous sin. You presume that it's supposed, but it was not like that. So even when you do that, it is sin. So Paul said, I might be preaching the gospel to you, but me, I submit this, I submit my body. He controls the body by the spirit. I submit my body under control. Because if you live in the flesh, 
Everything, every thought, every action will be pacifying the flesh. Let's go to disco. Uh, drink wine, drink beer. Uh, tonight, every Friday, there is a nightclub here. Naked women will come there. Nice guys will come there. So you have to keep this body. Because if you don't keep him, he will be controlling you. Why? And he is carrying this man inside. And this man cannot control him. Except he is drawing from the source of strength. When he has enough information, then he will put this body. Hey, Friday I will go to church. Hey, Saturday I will go to rehearsals. Why? He will be controlled by the spirit. So your body is in your own hands. If you want to die now, you can die. Can you take knife and kill yourself? Jesus will welcome you. Why? Because your will was in your own hands. But if you will submit that will for God, that is where your thoughts becomes godly thoughts. You think on the words. I will show you some time to come. Colors have got meaning. Deuteronomy, God told Israel that put a blue ribbon on your hand. And when you put the ribbon on your hand, you let the ribbon reflect my word. Anytime you see the blue shirt, you see Holy Spirit. Anytime you see this, you see me. So everything God did, he did not just do them. Read the word. In times of season, out of season, reprove, rebook, reproach, anything. Because if you don't do that, the body will just get out of, <laughs> out of hand. So please, pleasures are on the body. 1 John 2.11 He said there are three things that are in the world. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and then pride of life. These are the three things that control the, the body. But if you will not move, latest things, flashy cars, uh, they are good, they are beautiful, they are nice, but don't be so much consumed about them. So people will even follow money and die. If they have to use their head to take money and car will hit them, they will go. You see, they are chasing after money instead of chasing after God. So please, renew your mind. Romans chapter 12. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy, not part. In your singing ministry, some people love it, but they, they, one leg will be here. And another leg will be there. That one is not a whole, a whole thing. Your, whole, your two legs must be there. Osigo, 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 osigo. Praise the Lord, and praise the Lord. Singing, singing, prayer, prayer, joy, joy. But I belong to this church, but when we are looking for you, we don't find you. Pastor Prince will call you, ah, this man is going to tell you to come to church tomorrow. I will miss it, and then I will lie. So the body will be doing this like that, and God doesn't like it. So God willing, will proceed. Final message, final question, then we bring it to a close. Final or you want us to There's add five more minutes? Yes, ma'am. But my question, you will be answered, we will answer it, but she's not part of my one. I will still need one more question. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to know something about, so you know, saw this something that you're supposed to do. Was he given another chance? Because when someone came, he said, you, have, you did what you're supposed to do. But you know, sometimes when you sin, God gives you another chance to confess. Mm. But we didn't see anything. Is it because of this? That's a very powerful issue. Why didn't get that chance? You know, maybe you could have said, I'm sorry, God, mm. but I don't know on my mind. I don't know what happened. Let me clarify this. I wanted to put this later, but let me clarify. When the main reason why God cast Saul away is that Saul always ran to men for forgiveness. Papa, please come. Pastor, please stand here for me. No, you will stand here. I am King Saul. This is Prophet Samuel. This is God, our Father. Father is not a name, but that's how they knew God. Father is not God's name. So this is our Father God. Okay. This is Prophet uh, Samuel. I am Saul. Now, when he rebuked me, the only place of consolation to seek for forgiveness and pardon is not, it's not here. You must go here and cry to the Father himself, the one you have disobeyed his voice. Because when he speaks, I don't hear, I will hear through the mouth of this. So this one is like a crystal. 
It's like an oracle. He cannot reply me because he did not initiate it. So when the voice spoke to prophet, prophet bubbles, we call it Nabi, to, to bubble. So he speaks to me, I have done something against my father. So if I want to seek a clarity, a clear relationship, Papa, please, I didn't know. Because of fear, I just initiated a thing that I shouldn't have done. So please, have mercy. I will not do it again. So Saul had no repentance. There is something called sorrowful repentance. Sorrowful repentance is repenting of sin. You will never do it again. Not crying. When you still, you are caught, you cry. I will do it again, but you go for it. That is not repentance. You just cried. You were sorrowful, but you have not changed. So this guy was sorrowful, running to man for forgiveness, but he never repented. Why did he not repent? The Bible says, when God called Samuel into eternity, then there was another battle with Amalekai. He really forsook the house of God and ran into a village seeking for divination, enchantment. Why? Enchantment is the negative form of revelation. The true one is foreknowledge. Revelation is in threefold. So, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and the discernment of spirit. That's how God communicates. He forsook God's way and looking for enchant what meant. Which means he never repented. But David, he slept with this, this woman. God rebuked him. He said, God, forgive me. He will not sleep with another woman again. So that sin has been closed. He will take this man's property in a bad way. God will say, that is bad. He said, God, forgive me. He will not take another man's property again. So the reason why God loved David is that God, uh, David repented. And when he repents, he doesn't go back to eat that old food again. So that's the difference between the two. Why God loved David, but he forsook uh, Saul. Saul never repented. He always ran to men, but he does not consult after God. Mommy. Yeah, but it's not because, you know, in olden days, they were thinking that prophets are God, you know. Prophets is prophets are band between God and men. That's what they were thinking. So, is it not like he wanted Thank to, because he's thinking that, okay, he's, a, he's somebody that represents God. So, he was going to the person to tell the person, hey, please go to God. Because I know in the Bible it's something like that. Go to God and, and tell him I'm sorry. Okay, when you, when you, I mean, when you solve that, you know, in our culture, if you do something bad to your mother, you go to your mother's friend, closest friend, and go and apologize. No, we don't even go back to our mother and say, I am sorry. We just go to Auntie Mommy, please, I mess up, we'll go to my mother. I, I know in my family is there. So what is, you see, okay. is it? Let's start for Mommy, let's start for him. This is a very powerful question. You know what? Prophets represent God. There is no bad or bad issue about that. Number one, he ran to this guy, sought for forgiveness. Fine, he could do on your behalf. Secondly, this guy also went to battle. Now God said, destroy everything in the land of Amalekai. The whole city, God has condemned it as Sodom and Gomorrah. So it is a sin. And sin is supposed to be crushed. You don't spare his daughter or child. You don't spare anything. So when this guy went to battle, Bible said he saw their king. And he said the king is not even handsome, but beautiful. Which means the beautiful is a word gay, gay people use. When I see that, God beautiful. So I say handsome. Which means I have a passionate affection for him. So this man said, the king is beautiful. I have also spared the fattest cattle so that I will bring the cattle for God. Bible says that a cattle on a thousand hills are mine. If I am hungry, I will not tell you. So if God is looking to eat meat, he will not tell a man because everything belongs to him. So Saul knew that someone knew that Saul cannot change. 
Number one, he has pleaded for you. Number two, it has been over and over and over. Every time he's pleading on your behalf. Mommy, if you are in such shoes, will you entertain that person? For example, he has one wife. Okay. Yeah. He has a wife. Then he said, there's a problem with my wife. I want to divorce her. Okay, you have permitted. He has divorced her. Married another one. There is another problem with this one. Divorce her. I want another one. No, 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 no. When you do that, it is your nature. You keep on changing things. But instead of accepting correction, so if he, he accepted correction, that's good, but he did not. But he was sorrowful, sorrowful, like crying and weeping. Oh, don't do this. But tomorrow he will do it the same thing again. So God deserted him. And when God deserts you, his prophet also denies you. Because he stands in the gap for the one he's represented. So that's the difference. Some people, you can change them. Every day you are advising them. But mommy, they don't take your advice. Will you keep on advising them? Even when they bring something genuine, you say, mm -hmm, go on. Mm -hmm, continue. Because you will not speak to them from your heart. Yes, yes, yes. I hope you are following. So the nature of soul was like that. Today this, tomorrow that. The next day this, like that. Every time it comes in, comes out. Uh -huh. Like this, like that. Okay. All right. I hope we enjoy we, we, we enjoying this. Lastly, I want to okay. say something about the question uh, Minister Jeffrey asked. It is, it is very important and it's about how you program your mind. It's all about the programming of your mind. If you don't program it well, you are lost. The questions that mommy asks about even Saul, it's lack of knowledge he does not know because it was in the old and when David sinned and Nathan went to him he did not ask Nathan to pray for him King Hezekiah did the same thing when Isaiah nation prophet came he didn't say nation prophet pray for me he said okay thank you man of God he went to his chambers pray to God because he had that knowledge. It happened to King Hezekiah several times. He received a letter from the, the enemy who is stronger than him. He said, no, Father, I have come to your house. This is what the enemy has written to me. I have bring before you. So he knew how to go about it. Okay? So, and because Isaiah is equally nation prophet as, um, what do you call it, Samuel, you see? So it's not that one was powerful. It is the whole thing here, the spirit, the soul, and the body, the middle man, the media, the media is the problem. He is causing the problem, not even the body. Even though the body is the one that causes all the sin. That is why when you want to enter into the spirit, you ask us to close your eyes because it's the window that enters you. When you close your eyes, you are able to focus. You don't see anything. You see, even though the body is the one that causes, but how you program your mind, that is all. When you don't focus on the spirit, that is the man that if you focus on the body, you will get lost. Be born again. Bible said Nicodemus sneaked to Jesus Christ. He said, how can I be to be, to be um, best, to be perfect? He said, be born again. Nicodemus was confused. He said, how can I go into my mother's belly? And be born again. He was thinking of the body. But God, Jesus, was talking about the spirit. Not the body. He said the body is impossible to go back into your mother's belly for you to be born again. So if I tell you to be born again, I don't mean this body born again. I mean the spirit which has been terminated, contaminated in the garden of Eden 
be born again not the flesh so when we say born again everybody want to see you being born again in the flesh the spirit is an enemy to the body the spirit and 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 the, the body they are enemies the only person who brings the body and the spirit into a conformity is the soul so don't let your attention go to whatever the body is doing that is where we fall we are afraid to fall so we fall but if our attention all comes on this one gradually god will change the body don't let your mind go to the body forget it you drink but come to church that is that is one thing but i drank last night so i don't want to come to church that is where you fall you go miles away because that is what you know but no matter what you are doing don't pay attention just go to the spirit always oh even though he's holy whatever you are doing program the mind that god does not leave you you may, you might get the punishment yes but program the mind you might get disgrace because of what you did you see but it's so unfortunate that the the soul only consult the spirit when the body is in trouble when the body is in trouble so if you want that relationship forget about the body the body cannot do anything he has been cursed he has been condemned by god already so you cannot the soul you cannot fix the body that is one thing the soul cannot fix the body so let all the focus and the attention be on the spirit i am righteous i am holy i am this that should be your your saying so as soon as you are going to do something wrong i am righteous i am holy i can't do it it is better than for you to be righteous and holy and come to the spirit you can't do it so that is what i can say to you for jesus amen is anybody having the last one okay as i draw the curtains you know what ask yourself why would during a sports game a football game or any major league a slot 22 million sometimes over 25 million dollars will be paid just to show you a 30 second address have you asked yourself and even in the 30 second the last second counts the most all the one to the 29 doesn't matter the last one because of the soul but if you're able to get your attention the whole body will move like this without you having a second thought so please the media guy here we must be conscious about him God did not want to make us like robots. He would have programmed you. Good morning, Daddy. In the morning, I greet you. You will pray praying every day. Why? Because he is controlling that. But he has given your will to you that you must pray to him. You must worship him. May the Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Shall we say Amen? Amen. amen. Shall we bow our head for a word of prayer? Many have, many have been shared. I want you to pray. The Spirit of our Lord Bible says that when the people are willing, God always dwells with them. As we are leaving this place, the Spirit of God is now not in any other prophet. Bible says that He has made the Spirit indwelt in you. Because immediately you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Then the Spirit of God lives inside of you. When you think about anything negative, then the Spirit of God will counter it. And not that thought, and not that mind. That is the Spirit of God. So we are praying that God refine my spirit, refresh my mind, let my soul be in check. Because the battle is not of the Spirit, the Spirit has already been saved. But the body has to change by the renewing of the mind. When the soul renews, Day by day, with fresh word, with prayer, with songs, spiritual songs, said, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and sing spiritual songs and psalms. When you keep yourself listening to those things, that is where the spirit man is being nourished.
So say, Lord, help me so that in my day-to-day -day activity, I will not resort to the things that conform to my deformity through the opening of the flesh, but let the highlighting of the Spirit help me so that I get most of your word and nourishment. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. And pray that the presence of God will continually be with you. Because David, the other day said, if your presence do not go with us, Moses said, if your presence do not go with us, then we will not also go. So the Bible says that during the day, a pillar of cloud covered their, 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 their heads. And in the night, a pillar of fire. So when God is in the midst of his people, the people cannot err. The people cannot go wrong. Why? Because the presence of the king is with them. So you say, Lord, help me. I need your presence day by day so that my spirit will be in check and my body will be in check and I will do things that please you only that I don't disobey and don't become a prey to the enemy. Open your mouth and pray. Your final prayer is that anything that is thrown at you through your eye, through your ears, there are six gates to the body, but only five is seen by you. You have eye, nose, mouth, whatever, ears. But the sixth one is faith. Say, Lord, increase my faith. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. When faith is there, it doesn't matter how little it takes. You will grow from glory to glory, from strength to strength. So say, Lord, increase my capacity to receive faith, to get faith, to grow faith. Let us grow in our faith. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you so much. You have honored yourself in the midst of your people. And Father, as we bring everything to a close, we are not living in your presence. We ask, O oh Lord, that your presence will go with us. In everything that we are doing, O oh Lord, let your presence never leave. Let your presence never leave. Open the eyes of our understanding. Comprehend us, O oh Lord, by giving us day by day what we ought to do. That we will not fall prey and be victimized of something terrible. Father, we thank you for being with us. Keep all of us in shape. Nourish and protect us. And provide day by day. In the name of Jesus we have prayed. Let Holy Saint say Amen. Amen. God which you bless you so much. Let's start for Pastor. Hallelujah. It is good. It's good to do Bible studies. Hallelujah. If we were to be preaching, you can't ask questions. Hallelujah. So it's always good to come to Bible studies. Amen. Shall we please be on our feet and share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please, Friday, we are all going to Dickinson. Friday. Kapu. The time, the time, we will leave here.